forgot about the third pass fill. Oh, dude, I'm an idiot. I'm not even recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's about where I would run or run it. 50 to 60. Yeah. Well, I think it made the most elaborate humidifier. Hello, YouTubers. Welcome to my shop here in Asheville, North Carolina. And this is my steam engine. And I'm rather proud of this. Uh, it's been a couple years in the making. Um... You know, that's not working on it every day. I have a, you know, 40-hour-a-week job, and I have a couple other projects going on. So, you know, I didn't work on this all the time, but it took about two years to make. So I started with the crank. I knew I wanted a 2-inch square engine. It has a 2-inch stroke with a 2-inch diameter piston. And I got this bolt uh, from the recycle... Uh, steel place and uh, I machined it into a crank there on my 1930 South Bend lathe and then um, I made this uh, this cam out of brass a big chunk of brass and I machined it I bored it offset and that moves the this lever here and the, I ran into some problems with the stroke on this cam and so I had to compound it and I had to make a intermediate lever here so it would compound the throw in order to make my valve turn 90 degrees because of the way I have it plumbed all the everything is in a 90 degree rotation here on my valve and I'll get to that in just a minute um, these pillow blocks I made out of some stock aluminum I got from the recycle place and I planed them on my lathe uh, I bored it and then I made some red brass bearings and that is inside these pillow blocks and that crank is sitting nicely in the red brass and then I put a, uh, a board a nice I think it's even smaller than a sixteenth. I have some micro drills for my Dremel tool, and that's what I use to make the really tiny hole. And then I inset a, a bigger hole, uh, and then I can drizzle some oil in there. And I use gear oil, just good old gear oil from the uh, Wally World. I buy it by the gallon, and I use it for everything. Um, some of these smaller parts, I use the, uh, what is that called, 3-in-1 oil, which is kind of a sewing machine oil, and I really like that stuff too. Come over here, let's see. So I have a governor. I machined on the crank a interference fit to receive this uh, bicycle sprocket. And so what I had to do is uh, heat the sprocket up so it swelled up. I slipped it on there, and then when it cooled, it grabs on to the proper diameter, uh, which is just a couple of thousands. And the machinist handbook talks all about the interference fits and how to machine. Depending on the size of the material work you're working with, you'll have to allow... A few more thousands but basically you're machining something oversized and the part the mating part you're going to heat up slip it on and then it's going to shrink so that is a bicycle sprocket that has been uh, I guess interference fit <laughs> to fit this crank my flywheel this is a cast iron motor cap I don't know if you can see it. It's like an old school 1950s electric motor cap. And I machined it 
into a flywheel, nice piece of cast iron. And then I bored and tapped in the end of the shaft a 3 8 bolt and attached a bicycle sprocket to that, which will get attached to a Jenny later on. So the bicycle sprocket drives the governor. This is a governor I got from Banggood. It was like, I don't know, 40 bucks or something like that. And um, I had to modify it to work for this engine. It, the inlet lines were too small. They were really tiny. So I had to bore them out. I had to modify the, the pin. And I had to make the weights bigger. So I used some 50 caliber musket balls. And I soldered them on the ends. And... Um, I had to make a shaft for this guy here, so I took a chunk of brass, I bored a hole, it's a quarter inch hole, I got a quarter inch bolt is the shaft. I put a little flywheel on here to uh, just take a little stress, vibration stress off from the tiny little bevel gear that's here. So that shaft comes through and I machined it to receive that bevel gear on the Banggood Governor. And that's how that works. Just like so. So my valve. This is a chunk of brass. And this rotor is stainless steel. It's tapered. And the brass has a whole board in it, a tapered bore. And this rotor has the taper on it to match that bore. And there's holes going through all of it to uh, connect these plumbing together. And as that reciprocates, it lines the holes up accordingly and lets the steam go back and forth. This is a double acting engine. The plumbing, this one goes in the face. This line goes right in the edge of this head. And the hole comes up right in front of the piston. I have a cast iron cylinder. These are stainless steel heads. The piston is stainless steel and I made a ring for it and uh, the piston looks kind of like an Oreo cookie. It's two layers of stainless and then the there's a shoulder on one of the sides and the cast iron ring fits on that shoulder and is sandwiched in between the two pieces of stainless. And the push rod is a quarter inch bolt so on the end of that bolt are threads and that's what uh, holds the piston together on the inside here and there's a little pin, a keeper pin, a tiny keeper pin that keeps the nut from turning off. My connecting rod is just a piece of welded steel and I put a brass bearing in here I don't know if you can see that. So it's a two-piece uh, a cap that holds the uh, the bearing, which is in two pieces as well, and it just clamps it all together, and it's machined to fit on that crank pin just right. So my oiler, I just made this oiler. And it works pretty good. Uh, if anything, it it puts too much oil into the system. But I'd rather have too much oil than not enough. And it is a displacer oiler. And this 8th inch copper line goes through this half inch piece of copper pipe. 
capped on the bottom and I have a valve here to drain the water and it does fill up with water and I made a makeshift cap for it and the way this works is the steam comes in on this eighth inch line inside the half inch pipe there's a little pinhole in the top of it and the steam comes in and all this pressure is equalized so uh, the steam condenses into water and the water goes is heavier than oil so as the water sinks to the bottom it pushes the oil up into the pinhole and into the system and I experiment with different oils uh, tranny fluid works really well but it's also very messy and nasty so I switched to canola oil canola oil seems to be working really well I haven't had any problems with it this engine runs awesome so onto the boiler the boiler is a big old paint can a pressurized paint sprayer thingy it's really heavy it's very thick gauge metal it's old school uh, probably from the 70s or 80s and it works great um, it already had the uh, the tapped holes to receive the plumbing um, I fill my water right here so I can pour my water in I put this cap on I tighten it down I've got two pressure relief valves and I put this piece of pipe over it because these pressure relief valves they blow out the side and it wouldn't be pleasant to have steam blowing on me so I just put that piece of pipe over it so it can escape out the top here's the other pressure relief this one's a hundred and fifty pound pressure relief this one says it's a hundred and twenty five pound pressure relief but uh, when I tested it with an air compressor, it actually went off at about 90 pounds. But I only work the steam engine at about 50 to 60 pounds. And it holds a nice steady 60 pounds like all day. It just works so awesome. So I got this manifold at Lowe's. You can't see it because I got it wrapped with a, a hockey tape. And I put foam on it to insulate it, but the foam melted. You can't really see it, but because um, it's wrapped in hockey tape, but the foam is all melted and it's all defunctified. But it's still insulating and doing its job. I used a air compressor air gauge and it works fine. I was questioning whether it could handle the heat of the steam uh, it has no problem. Uh, it works great. I took the glass lens off so it wouldn't fog up. And so now I got a great visual and I can see it from a mile away. Put the, uh, a gas valve on it. And it all gets reduced. I believe this is half inch up here. It's a half inch manifold. Half inch copper pipe. Uh, I'm sorry. This is not copper. This is cast iron. Everything is threaded. There's no solder on any of this. It's all threaded iron until I get past the valve. Then I reduced it to copper tubing, and there is some solders. And I got it down to the eighth inch copper tubing coming through here. Another valve, yada yada. I got a little more hockey tape on here, and it goes into the valve. So to fire this boiler, I use propane, and I use a weed burner that I got at Harbor Freight for a whole $20, and it works great. I put about four gallons of water in here, and it takes about, oh, 15 minutes to start getting the gauge to go up. And hey, probably about 20 minutes, uh, I get about 50 pounds of pressure. It actually heats very fast which is a nice little pleasure. 
And if I really have to, I can build a fire under here. Um, I welded this frame together, and I put, I don't know if you can see, I don't know where I got this table. It's a metal table. I acquired it somewhere, and then I attached these uh, wheels on it so I can roll it and move it outside. Obviously, I'm in my shop right now. I painted these because they're right at shin height and I don't want to knock my shins into it so <laughs> hopefully I'll see that damn thing and not kick into it um, so overall I'm really happy with this engine it runs better than I, I thought it would I honestly didn't think I was gonna I don't know I just thought I was gonna run into problems but actually when I got it all together it runs awesome. This is actually my fourth engine that I've built. Uh, I built a few others. The first two were complete fails. And the third one was pretty cool, but it was single acting. And yeah, so I really wanted a double acting square engine. And that's what I set out to do when I built this. And uh, that's what I got. And I'm really happy with it. I'm going to do some more stuff. Like I said, I'm going to... Um, rebuild this con rod I want to make that brass and like this push rod I, I have a piece of copper I'm gonna put on that and I'll put some more bling on it here and there and really make it shine I'm not gonna invest a lot of time in making it shine because when it's running this thing just throws oil everywhere and it just uh, <laughs> it's a mess when it runs but yeah it's kind of like a Harley. So I appreciate your time. I appreciate you watching this video. And, you know, I really enjoy learning stuff. And I love steam. And I've enjoyed learning all about engines and dealing with this. Uh, all the machining I had to do and the learning process of machining different metals. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's been huge. But anyways, hopefully you learned something too, and if not, oh well, I'm not perfect. Hmm. <laughs>